with more than 2 million downloads. This is your number one source for true crime coverage in America. This is Murder in the Morning with Tony Bruschi and Stacy Cole. From the Hit Killers Podcast, Murder in the Morning. Remember the case of the Kansas City Chiefs fans? The three guys who were hanging out watching the game and then they all were found dead in the backyard. That's what we're talking about here. Um, this happened back in January of uh, 24. It was, yeah, it was this year. It was 2024. Uh, mm-hmm. um, well, uh, now uh, charges could be forthcoming in that case, though likely not against the homeowner, according to the homeowner's lawyer. Uh, David Harrington, who was 37, Clayton McGinney, 36, and Ricky Johnson, 38, visited their friend Jason Willis's home in Kansas City to watch the Chiefs play the Los Angeles Chargers on January 7th. Two days later, the trio was found dead in Willis's backyard. John uh, Picanero, Willis's attorney, told People that after discussions with prosecutors involving the case, he believes charges will be filed in the coming weeks, but not against his client. I do not anticipate that he's going to be charged with any kind of homicide in any way or involvement in that, he said. And so obviously we're very pleased with that. Pickering had previously stated that Willis was unaware of how his friends died. Harrington's father, John Harrington, previously told people that Kansas City police had read him a toxology report indicating that cocaine and fentanyl were found in his son's body. While the report has not been made public, authorities have not disclosed official causes of death of the victims. Picarino believes that the person who supplied the drugs to the men could potentially face charges. I believe that the supplier of the drugs may be held accountable. Hopefully they can figure out who that is. I'm guessing maybe looking at some cell phones and digital evidence might point that out. Kansas City police have previously stated that the investigation is not a homicide investigation. In response to Picarino's comments, a police spokesperson said investigators did advise that they're continuing to work with the Platte, uh, or Platte County Prosecutor's Office and could have some updates uh, in the coming weeks. In an email to people, the prosecutor's office stated that there was no new information to report uh, and the case is still under investigation. Uh, In March, two months after his son died, John Harrington said the results of the investigation couldn't, uh, wouldn't change anything for him, saying, quote, I don't really care what they find out now. It doesn't matter to me, he said. I've already said my goodbyes to David and it's not going to change uh, anything. Which, you know, might not be a bad way of of dealing with something uh, like this. John mentioned that an awful lot of people attended David's memorial on January 21st, which showed him how much they were missing him. This is why you don't get drugs off the street, kids. Um, Because, yeah, this is so fucking rampant with that sort of shit. Uh, And it's killing people left and fucking right. It is. And you know, what astounds me, and I'm, I guess I come from kind of old school. I worked in a pharmacy when I was in college, well, high school and college. And, you know, I always saw the painkillers going out. Mm -hmm. And when I got into veterinary medicine, we used, oh, what did we use? Buprenorphine. Um, I'm trying to remember what we used. Um, We never had fentanyl at our clinic, but I saw dogs that, maybe he had an amputation done somewhere else and they came in to get their stitches removed. They had, they would have a fentanyl patch. I had, my cat had an ear surgery and I got him a fentanyl patch yeah. to me. It's always about pain relief, but yeah. people are taking fentanyl as like a recreational drug. Yeah. They, they like the high. And to me, I just, I don't get it. There are other things that you can get high off of like pot, for example, Mm-hmm. That to me just seems like a better experience than possibly coming across something that's going to fucking kill you. Well, exactly. And, and, and you can get it in many states now. Can we say most yet? How many states have, have legalized it? I don't even, I, I really don't know. Cause you have, you have the med and, and here's the reality of this folks. If you're, if you're not aware, like states that are medical quote unquote, um, you can get a fucking, anyone can get it. Okay, all you have to do is like go online and talk to somebody for five minutes and go, uh, look, I'm stressed out. I have anxiety. I have this or that. And I mean, I do. And and I 
I have PTSD from some things I'm not really going to talk about at this second on the air. Um, but uh, I got mine. It was very easy. And they don't really, there's no like proving anything. You can say pretty much anything you want and you can get a medical marijuana card in states that are medically legal. And it's not like you're going in and it's like it's in the prescription bottle. No, there's fucking gummies or snacks. It's like going into a, a, a candy store, really. Uh, when you go into these mm -hmm. medical marijuana shops, even in the states where it's medical uh, versus recreational, they're very, very similar. But you at least know that it's it's regulated and that it's not going to be laced with some weird shit that you're going to get on the street. I, you know, the whole fentanyl thing, I'm I'm a huge Prince fan. And ever since his death, to me, that was the biggest death from fentanyl that I had experienced in 2016. I didn't know it was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, you're just, if you are acquiring fentanyl from a non FDA regulated source, I think you're, you're playing with the devil right there. You're, you don't know what's going on. You don't know where your friend no. got it. A lot of times people don't even know that it's even in something. There's not necessarily people that are like taking fentanyl to take fentanyl. They're, it's getting mixed into so other taking shit. something else. Yes. And then it's like, oh, and it was laced and with fentanyl laced with to make it stronger. And it's like a, what was the, the analogy? I was talking to Robin Drake about this earlier today. It's like a chocolate chip, essentially like in a brownie or something. Um, you know, it, it's not always going to be mixed up well enough. And the, the minute amount of fentanyl that it will take to kill you is less than a grain of rice. Okay, that's just insane. Yes. I, no wonder people are, are dropping left and right from this. Yes, because that's how easy and quickly it is to kill you. Why this drug was ever invented, I don't even know. That doesn't even make any sense to me because it's like a thousand times more powerful than like the closest like other opiate type drug. Um, yeah. Why we it's would a hundred times stronger than morphine, heroin, and oxycodone. Why do we need something that strong? I, you know, I don't know. Um, the others weren't picking it up pretty well and killing plenty of people. We needed something a hundred times stronger. I, I know when I had uh, a major organ removed, um, they put me on morphine. Yeah, and it covered it. Yeah. Why would you, you need know? something a hundred times stronger other than let's kill a lot of people uh, and then make the uh, make the antidote as well within the same company? Well, there's your answer. And it's all fucking legal. It's our fucking prescription drug world. There, there's so many messed up things with all that. And we all know that um, not to go too far off topic, but I sent you a chart last night that mm -hmm. I, I had put together and uh, there was a story yesterday about Adderall. And I, I'm, I'm, let me start by saying this. I am not anti-prescription drug. I am not anti-taking antipsychotics or anti-whatever, you know, for anxiety, depression, whatever. There are a There is a huge place for that. And we need those sort of things out there. They yeah. change lives and, and help people get balanced when their bodies otherwise do not allow them to be balanced. Uh, sometimes it, for based on whatever medical reason and your biology. And, and look, some of us, a lot of us, we're just born with the uh, little fucked up minds. Um, and and it's, it helps. It's a good thing when prescribed correctly and the right dosage is monitored correctly. Nothing wrong with it. I'm very pro that. I take some stuff myself. And I'll tell you what, it's, changed me in a positive way but you know what there's also the world of over prescribing this sort of shit mm -hmm. and the quick fix because everybody and their brother has ADHD it seems um, and maybe we all do with the world that we live in I don't know but the, um, the level to which we have now started prescribing that shit to children uh, is astronomical and it's not being done necessarily by uh, psychiatrists uh, that that the type that should be taking a look at this that can specialize in this area and do it. It's general care physicians who basically mom comes in one day and says, you know, so and so is, we think has ADHD. You know, I see the signs. My friend had kids has this. Da, 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 da. Well, let me prescribe you this. Here you go. 
And then when it's not quite working and little Jimmy isn't quite, you know, as calm and uh, not acting like a child that children act like, and mom wants them even more, you know, sedated, I think we need a little bit more. Okay, we can up the prescription a little bit, and that's how easy it fucking is. And what they've discovered is that over prescribing this, or or rather a, a higher dose of it, where you're taking more than you should, which can certainly happen, um, can lead to mania and somewhat psychotic psychosis, basically. And I read that and I was like, well, that's really interesting because I know it's way over prescribed for children in this country. So let's do a little comparative chart here. Let's take a look comparatively to the level of which we prescribe this drug to children and how it's gone from 1990 to 2024 and made a graph chart out of it with actual data from the CDC and from uh, other sources. Uh, and I, I can cite them. I, I've already cited them. I I put it on my Instagram and I did cite all the sources and they're all legit. I just don't have it directly in front of me, but I can probably pull it up here. Uh, and there's a correlation with something, isn't there? Oh, yes. Oh, you, okay. So I got it from Centers for, from the CDC, uh, from the K-12 school shooting database and USA Facts. That's where my data came from. She's like, where's this cup? That's, there's your answer. Um, and then we uh, took a look at uh, the amount of school shootings in our country. And you take a look at that graph, and there's a blue line and a red line, and they pretty much line up next to each other. Wow. So we didn't used to live in a world where there was this many school shootings. Then Correct. We, then we started really prescribing the shit out of these drugs. And I think our parenting skills have also gone way the fuck down, too, where Parents just don't parent very well, or they don't want to parent very well, or they just think there's a magic pill that will calm little Jimmy down. And in many cases, it does. You know, if you look at kids as a whole that are prescribed these medications, a majority of them are not going and shooting up schools. But you do have the situations where it does get over the top. And there is a direct correlation between the two. Now, you could, and I got, I got people arguing with me saying, well, there's a direct correlation between the price of groceries between now and then, too. Yes, there, there certainly is. But this is a little different. This is, some, this is a mind-altering drug we're talking about. Oh, yeah, it changes things in, in your brain. Yeah. I mean, now we can talk about our diets and shit, too, and how that probably affects us as well, and that's probably another argument to be made. But... Again, I'm not anti-prescription drugs. I'm looking at these facts and going, hmm, could this have something to do with it? We're really drugging the shit out of children. And I'm sure, you know, every once in a while you get some that are way over the fuck drugged because the parents don't want to deal with them or they're just they really need help. And they, there's not mental health assistance available to them. Uh, in any sort of you know reasonable cost, or the parents aren't educated enough to realize that the kids need that sort of shit, and then you end up with what we have. I don't think there's. Uh, I mean, th these these kids essentially are fairly psychotic when they're going out and, and doing these things, or they're in some sort of real weird mania state when they're going out doing these things. Not all of them are on these drugs. I will definitely say that, but there is a correlation. And it's worth looking into because we, yeah. we do have an epidemic of of shootings, not just school shootings, but shootings. And, you know, we can go down the rabbit hole and talk about, you know, where is this coming from? Uh, you know, I personally, I think it's guns that are too readily available. And I say this with eight or nine really big guns in my home, including handguns. I'm a gun owner. I'm a gun advocate. Yep. But I think we've got some really scary guns out there and and we don't have our red red flag laws yep. uh, in place to pr protect really the general population. We're gonna look, and then we've got mentally ill people. We're going to look back on this as a perfect storm and going, why the fuck did nobody see this? Because yeah. it, it's a combination of many things. Weapons that are far too readily available to children, children who need mental health help and they're not getting it or they're getting it simply in the form of a pill rather than along with cognitive therapy and things of that nature. 
uh, and shitty parenting. Yep. And you put all that shit together and you got a kid that is so frustrated because they're being bullied or whatever the fuck it may be at school and their view and their prism is really fucked up and off. Uh, and they think that the best thing to do is to get revenge because, you know, that's how our brains think when we're younger. We're not that reasonable. We we are much more reactive and all of that. That's just how we fucking work as human beings. And then you add these drugs to it and all the other things. Yeah, it's not it's not rocket science, really. Um, and I'm not saying it's all Adderall or this, or that, but I, I can guarantee you add a bunch of mind altering drugs in situations where they're not necessarily the best situation. And t believe me, there's plenty of kids who should be on some of this shit that aren't. Um, it's, it's not a good thing, but we're not administering it responsibly. Uh, essentially, and I'm not knocking general care physicians by any means, um, but they're not, many are not qualified to be prescribing these sort of drugs. And they are mm -hmm. prescribed far too easily and far too readily if you're a general care physician, you're like Walmart, basically. What do you specialize in? Well, you're, you have everything. You can, you can help with anything. You're general care. But I, we're talking about somebody who has a, a mind problem. There's something going on in their brain. Well, you should probably go see the psychologist over here. Well, that's my insurance doesn't cover that. Or like, well, can you prescribe that? Well, I can probably prescribe that. Yep. And it's, it's never... I, 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 there's certainly people who overprescribe and are ignorant as shit about it, but many of it's not done in any sort of nefarious way. It's done because people are in certain situations where I mean, fucking getting psychological care, many insurances don't cover it. Many like limit it to such re in ridiculous restrictions where it's like, you get three therapist sessions a year. Do you know how fucking therapy works? <laughs> like three. And then after yeah, that, right? it, it's, it's, it's so insane. But, but it's a problem we've created on our own. And it's a problem we have a very difficult time identifying or admitting that we have. 100%. So, 100%. It's, uh, I'll get off my soapbox, but that, um, the access to the shit and what it can do is uh, obviously completely insane. So think about that. You're in the thick of a true crime saga, every detail sinking in, and then, wham, a commercial about something you couldn't care less about. It's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant. But it doesn't have to be this way. Go for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and savor every twisted detail without interruption.